As you may know, among the other strange things that I find myself doing from day to day, I have been producing a monthly video series that tracks the top 10 games on Board Game Geek's hottest games list. And inevitably, while working on these videos, I'll find several other games on the hotness list that also catch my eye, but just don't rank high enough to make it onto the official top 10, so I never get a chance to talk about them. That is, until now, because in this series, I'm going to discuss five of these recent games that, even though they didn't actually make it into the top 10, still piqued my interest for one reason or another and caught my eye. So if you want to see five games that recently sparked my curiosity, well, stick around because we're about to count them down. So. When I rediscovered board gaming in 2012, I was overwhelmed by the myriad of genres and designers and mechanisms that I discovered to explore. It was overwhelming. But soon, I learned of a game in each category that could serve as a kind of introduction to that particular genre. Uh, for example, a game that nicely introduces worker placement mechanisms is Stone Age. Now, the prehistoric players of Stone Age spend the game collecting wood, breaking stone, and stockpiling gold. And within the next few months, Hans and Glick and Z-Man Games will introduce the 10th anniversary edition of Stone Age, which includes a double-sided game board, featuring a winter on one side and summer on the other side, decorative player pieces, a revised rulebook, two mini expansions called the Igloos and the Wild Animals, and a Winter is Hard variant, just in case surviving as a pre-agricultural nomad wasn't enough of a challenge for us. Now, Stone Age helped introduce me to worker placement games, and its 10th anniversary edition may be a good excuse to travel back in time to revisit this classic gateway game. Some board games try to emulate other types of games, such as tower defense, real-time strategy, or even first-person shooter video games. And with that last one, such is the case with 2016's Adrenaline, which actually does a pretty decent job of recreating the feel of a first-person shooter. This is a game that I waited for in anticipation. Oh, I couldn't wait for it to come out when this originally was released. And then I played it, and I enjoyed it, but I never really fell in love with it, I guess I could say. But, you know, I'd certainly play it again if there ever was an opportunity to get it back on the table. And actually, that may happen because the recently announced Team Play DLC expansion for the game may be just that opportunity. The expansion adds the possibility for a sixth player, variable winning conditions, and introduces character-specific weapons and abilities. All things that I think Adrenaline really does need. Now, apparently, the gameplay itself has also been streamlined, increasing the focus on the action of grabbing ammo and just blowing things up. All of that stuff sounds great, because a little more variety may be just the shot in the arm that Adrenaline needs in order to get players blood pumping once again. That's blood. Here's something cool. Four out of five YouTube experts suggest that, at this point in the video, I implore you, the viewer, to subscribe and turn on the little bell for notifications. But no, I refuse to stoop so low as to degrade myself just for more of those precious, precious subscriptions. Please consider subscribing because I am imploring you to do so. Many things can cause a game to catch your eye. Uh, innovative gameplay, its designer or its publisher, having a catchy name, a, a hook on the box, or even the game's artwork. And speaking of artwork, it took just a few art samples for the Stygian Society, which is coming out in 2019 by Ape Games, to lure me into its trance. And then I snapped out of it and I took a closer look and learned that the Stygian Society is designed to be a diceless dungeon crawl. Okay, that's interesting. And then I went on to learn that in the game, heroes work together to climb a cube tower, eliminating enemies as they work their way to the tower's top. All right, go on. Then I learned that players drop cubes into this tower based on the skills that they use on their turn, along with additional cubes representing the enemies that they will be fighting. Then both the players and the enemies act on, based on what drops out of the bottom of the cube tower. Okay, so. Learning that, 
I have to admit, I am intrigued and gassy. But what I really want to know is if by heroes climb a cube tower, do you mean that the player characters literally are going to be climbing up a three-dimensional tower as they play right there on the table? If so, you have my attention, Stygian Society. Unfortunately, though, I was too lazy to continue Googling to find out more details. But I will be keeping an eye on this one to see if the final product matches the fantastic experience that just lives in my imagination at the moment. But if you have more information on how the Stygian Society is actually going to play or look like on the table, well, please drop me a comment because I would love to extract the knowledge that you have about this game locked in your brain and bring it out and absorb it into my own, but not in a, in a creepy way, just a professional game enthusiast uh, manner. The next game on the list that has me simmering in anticipation is The Boldest, to be published by Stronghold Games in February 2019. The Boldest introduces a world of forgotten creatures, a mysterious iron valley, and a royally mandated quest for heroic deeds. So saith the king. In the game, players will defeat mechanical monsters, retrieve enigmatic artifacts, and use helpful items to lead their faction to glory. But even though that's all out there, I barely registered any of it because I am continually distracted by Max Prentice's artwork in this game. Something about it almost has a Jeff Darrow's Young Apprentice feel to it to me, I think. You know, somewhat. Honestly, I don't know if that even makes sense because not everything I say actually does. But I know that there is something about this game that has that, that it factor for me. So I'm going to officially let myself get my hopes up for this game. But then I noticed that it's currently rocking a 6.3 rating on Board Game Geek, which is okay, but doesn't fill me completely with consumer confidence. So I'm approaching the boldest with cautious optimism. If this game does end up disappointing me, it's going to be okay. Because I am preparing to allow that to be a disappointment that I am actually looking forward to experiencing. You know what I mean? Probably not, because that may have also been an example of saying something that does not, does not actually make sense. I'll own that. True fact. I back two, maybe three Kickstarters a year. But the game finishing off this episode's list is one of the few games that came along that made me break my own rule. The game is Cloudspire by Chip Theory Games. And Boy howdy, on paper, this game hits every one of my buttons. Dice, modular board design, secret unit deployment, action programming, variable player powers, clouds. It just has so many design elements that interest me that I realize that I have totally neglected to actually mention what this game is actually about yet. So let me uh, rectify that. Cloudspire is heavily influenced by both tower defense and multiplayer online battle arena or MOBA games. In the game, players control one of four unique factions, which they'll use to defend against armies and minions, build towers to protect their base, and explore the landscape in search of resources and powerful relics. As I mentioned, Cloudspire is one of the few Kickstarter projects this year that's managed to coax me into parting ways with my precious, precious money. But I backed it, and I'm glad that I did, because the game sounds really interesting to me, and Chip Theory Games totally knocked it out of the park with their previous title, Too Many Bones. Now, I just gotta wait until June of next year for it actually to become a product that actually exists and can be shipped and arrive in a box. In the meantime, if Cloudspire interests you as well, well, I totally recommend checking it out to find out if it's a game that you would enjoy. But hurry! Because when this episode airs, there's going to be less than 48 hours left in Cloudspire's Kickstarter campaign. So there you go. There are five games that recently caught my eye, and why? And I want to know if any of these are also on your radar, or if there's something else that you've been looking forward to, let me know in the comments. And if you want to stick around for more board game countdowns and news, previews, and fun in video format, be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification to be alerted to future videos and live events, just like I implored you earlier. Until next time, I've been Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise. Thanks, and take care.
In the game, players will defeat mechanical monsters, retrieve enigmatic, they'll get magical, and no, I'm going to say the word right, enigmatic. It's not a hard word to say. Boom. Enig and <laughs> Darn it. It's not a hard word to say. Retrieve enigmatic, to enigmatic. Retrieve enigmatic martif, martif, retrieve enigmatic art, retrieve enigmatic artifacts and helpful I, and why can't I read the sentence? Start out with the, let's check them out. Start, we're starting to check them out now. Many things can cause a game to catch your eye, but only three of them can actually rip it out of your skull and drag it down the street as you clasp your skull, erasing it after down the sidewalk. <laughs> Let me rewrite that part. 